Well, hey everybody, how are you? Happy almost March. Um, I'm recording this on the 28th, but by the time you see this, it'll be March. So happy March. Um, hope you guys are all doing well. Um, if you aren't familiar with this channel, my name is Jennifer and I am in Texas. Um, and this channel consists of a couple of different uh, hobbies, major hobbies that I partake in, one of which is knitting, which we'll discuss tonight, the other of which is cross stitch, which we will probably talk about on the next episode. And sprinkled in between, I'll do tutorials or unboxings, which I actually have one, but it's cross stitch related, so um, that'll be coming a little later on. Um, but yeah, so most of this channel is just dedicated to the stuff that I'm into, what I get up with. Um, the cats meowing in the background and all of that other fun stuff. So, uh, like I said, this episode is, uh, my next knitting episode and surprisingly I've gotten a lot of stuff done. Um, I kind of got my knitting groove back, um, since the last one, um, I had some plans, all those plans got accomplished. Then I did some more stuff and then I actually am almost... Well, not almost. I am more than halfway done with a pair of socks. What? So that's kind of exciting. Um, and then I've got some other really cool stuff that I want to show you that I've um, procured over the last couple of weeks since I last discussed um, yarn related uh, crafty stuff. So let's start with my finished objects, which... I've got a bunch. I've actually, well, and I say I've got a bunch, but um, if you notice the episode title, um, yeah, I kind of doubled up <laughs> on some projects because they were things that I did and then I realized either I wanted to do them again, they were so great, or they weren't quite to my liking, so I had enough yarn left over that I was able to accomplish two. Um, so the first one um, I'll talk about just because I think this is the one that I mentioned um, last time that I had started was my Blurry Flurry hat. Um, and I ended up doing two. <laughs> and what's crazy about this is, I will start with, this is um, a, a pattern by Cozy Up Knits. And um, this hat in particular was meant to be the single brim, not the double brim hat, <laughs> but I have it folded up because um, it actually fits better folded up. So what I did was um, the original pattern had a single brim and a double brim. The double brim called for six inches of um, the ribbing. And so this is the three inch brim, but this fits really well doubled up. Um, so I thought, well, why not do the same thing? I still had just enough yarn left of the, um, the pink, the purpley color that I cut basically the body of the hat by three inches. And so instead of doing a, I think it's supposed to be like eight inches before you start your, to do your decreases, I only did five. So from the edge to my de decreases was five inches. And this fits just about, it's, it's a little, um, it doesn't quite cover my ears, but with my hair, I mean, I got a lot of hair. So once I pull a hat over it, my hair between my hair and the hat, it does, it covers up my ears fine. Um, but this hat was, I originally had meant to make for my sister. And, um, and so I gave her the option because I had these two pom-poms of which color she liked better. And I'm giving her the, the rolled up brim one, but she's a, she's definitely a black person. So this is the one she's getting. Um, so then when I made the second one, um, I wanted to try the shorter and since it fit me well, um, and I just barely have any yarn left so this is um their pattern calls for an Aran weight yarn I think but what I actually ended up doing and I have so little of it left um I ended up holding a black 
along with, sorry for all the clanging guys, that's my needles and my yarn bowl. It's a freaking nightmare. Um, it's all twisted up. But the black and then a uh, yarn crate, which I barely have any left of, um, dusty rose color. And I, what I did was I wound up that skein into two balls and then held it, you know, so basically it was three, it was fingering held triple is what it was to get, um, the gauge of yarn that I needed, um, to get the hat the way I wanted it. So, so yeah, I'm really happy with these. And that was really, that was the deal was by the time I finished hers, I had loved this hat so much because I'd already made myself one in completely different colors. And then I got done with this one. I was like, I want these colors too. So like I said, I made just a shorter version. So it's not quite the same as the original that I made. I have a folded up brim one and now I've got a shorty, shorty beanie one. Um, yeah, it's really, really nice. So, um, the pattern calls for two sets of needles, um, a five millimeter and a six millimeter circular, um, basically five millimeter for the ribbing. And then once you start the body, you do six millimeter and yeah, they are totally, totally cute. Um, and I always put, I think the link to my Ravelry page. So anything that I forget to mention, or you want to know, specific yarns or whatever um all of my pattern information is there and the tags if you're curious these are um i believe i bought these from the grocery girls and they are just um i think they're faux leather i don't think they're real leather but they come in a bunch of different um so they have some square ones and then some some uh, rectangular ones that you just stitch onto your stuff. But then they also have these that you fold up that basically have a rivet um, that has one side that's uh, got a screw, a flathead screw. So all you have to do is just um, put it between the holes on the tag, the big hole, you know, fold, double up, fold over the, the tag and then um, screw the screw the rivet on so yeah totally totally cute we kind of now have matching hats i hope she's okay with that but they are just totally awesome and i was so thrilled so i got those done um and then in addition to those hats i also got another set of hats done so this one was the um uh nomadic knits did the lonely hearts club knit along um, and I can't remember, I think the hat is called the Lonely Hearts Club hat or whatever. Um, and this one came in about, I think six different sizes. It was like a, a, a infant or, a, you know, a baby, a small child, a child, and then a small adult, adult, and a large adult. Well, the first one I did was the middle, the, just the regular adult sized. And it's got this really cute motif, which you could stitch once or you could stitch repeating around. And I don't know if you can kind of see it, but basically it's a stockinette, but it's got a pearled heart motif on it. So this was the first one that I did. And this is that, um, I did mention this one the last time. This is that Love is a Battlefield um, yarn, which I thought the name of the yarn was rather appropriate. But... Um, so this was the regular adult one and this one was like huge, just absolutely huge. And I did on this one, ended up doing the hearts like three times around the front. So basically the back just kind of has a larger, you know, flat space on the back, but it was just a really big hat. And I even got my husband to try it on and it was kind of big on him and it was like, okay, well I had plenty of this yarn left and again, um, this I think was like a sock weight or a fingering weight that I held double, um, or no, sorry, it was a DK that I held double because this was a bulky, um, bulky yarn hat. Um, and so, but I still had plenty left. So then I made another one and I did the small adult and it fits perfect. And this one fits kind of like that other blurry flurry does where it, it fits right at my ears, covers up my ears. Um, so it's a nice beanie and this one I was able to space the hearts um, evenly because there is one less repeat um, so there wasn't an extra like panel 
um, you know, for like the back. And this one, um, I used those same tags again. That's one of the ones I used on the, the larger of the two. And then this one was a stitchable one from Katrinkles that was a little heart. So I stitched the little, and these are actually, she, her tags are washable tags. So I'll show you these as well. These right here, washable tags. So that's what I did was I took one of the gray, gray kind of pewter colored ones and some of the leftover yarn and stitched the little heart on there. So again, this one in, is going to be my hat. And, um, I have a friend who has, um, a lot of hair and kind of a larger, um, circumference, head circumference. So I'm going to send this actually to her first and see if she can wear this or would wear this. And then if she will, um, then by all means, she will definitely keep it. If, um, it's not her style, which... I don't know. It might not be. Not everybody's a pink and gray and, you know, girly, girly kind of. Then um, I'll let her have the choice, but I'll tell her basically that if, you know, if it's not something that she would wear, um, that this would have gone to like Warm Up America or, or a charity, you know, that takes knitted um, knitted accessories. Um, so I would let her choose. I mean, she could certainly donate it to whoever she wants or give it to whoever she wants, but if she wanted a suggestion, I just tell her, you know, if you don't want to keep it, that's fine. But that's, that's where this would have gone next. So, um, the cat's really big, but yeah, it turned out really super cute. So again, two hats got done. Um, and this one, um, this was a knit along over Valentine's weekend. So it was the 13th was Saturday. Valentine's was Sunday and then through the 15th on Monday. I had this one, I think, done, started. I think I cast it on Friday night um, just to kind of get it going so I could just start knitting it on Saturday. I was done with it on Saturday. <laughs> and so basically I cast on and knit all of this one on Sunday. So these were super quick to make, um, super cute. And again, I'll have my Ravelry page down below so you can go see like all of the um, information. Oh, and I guess I didn't really mention the other hat. These pom-poms I got from, um, but I think I talked about this last time, from Joann's. I buy a bunch of them. They're, they're uh, either Buttercream or KNC brand um, and they just have like a elastic. So I'll usually... Um, with these, what I'll do is I will actually sew a button in and then wrap it around, you know, tight enough so it kind of stays put. I mean, this was still kind of loose, but that way it can be taken off if it's going to be washed. These were left over from an Amazon order that I had that are actually, they're snaps. So, um, which is kind of nice because if you buy these and you want to change them out, like, you know, if if you only had the one hat and you had a gray and a pink and you wanted gray one day and pink another day, I mean, you could switch them out, but again, designed so that if you're going to wash the hat, you don't ruin the pom pom. Um, so I like those two, but those actually came from Amazon. So I don't remember, but if anybody is truly, truly interested, um, leave a comment below and I will, um, send you, I'll see if I can go through my order history. Cause I got these a long time ago, so I don't know if they're still listed the same way or not. Um, but I can certainly try to go through my order history and just see if I can find you the original um, ones that I purchased because it was like a package of like 12 different colors or whatever. So, so yeah, totally cool. So then those are all the things that I finished, but um, so in the knitting world, <laughs> we call finished objects FOs, but we also call in cross stitch finished objects, FOs, like, you know, you've finished stitching, stitching a, a project. Well, in the knitting world, um, sometimes you knit things that are in pairs, like socks and mitts. And <laughs> so you have what's called a hoe, which a half finished object. <laughs> so, which I do. So this is, um, what I talked about last time, the patterns, um, sock along, um, 
that they did um, and it was like a three week uh, pattern that was released over three weeks I basically didn't start these socks till after the third the release of the third pattern um, but this is um, as far as I got with the one and I am currently this far along on the second and this is um, so if you notice the colors are very, um, you know, just black, white, and gray, or black, black, and varying shades of gray. Um, so I couldn't help myself because it reminded me so much of the sweaters David Rose uh, would wear, Daniel Levy would wear in Schitt's Creek. So I'm using my David Rose sweater <laughs> marker just to basically keep track of um, the first, the first um, round. Um, but this is basically, this is a slip stitch pattern. So, um, you do your, your ribbing like you normally would, you do your cast on, and then it's just a real simple repetitive, um, slip stitch pattern. So you get this nice ridge. And then when you get to the heel, once you get to the heel and you complete the heel, then they switch over to where the bottom of the sock is a nice flat you know, fabric, so you're not walking on that ridgy um, pattern on the bottom of your foot, but then on the top, the ridges go all the way down to the toe. So, um, this one is also in three sizes. It's, um, and I think they're women's sizes, the way the chart reads up. Um, so it's like a small, medium, and large, and I did the large, and as you can see, it is really large, but I have really big feet, and I have really big calves, so I actually don't mind that they're big, um, but I will say the women's large size is like women's size 10 to 12, and I'm an, an 11-ish, um, and this fits me without any stretch at all, so this is almost like a slipper sock to me. I don't know that I would go down a size because I don't know um, losing that much um, width if then all of a sudden I'm stretching out to where you can't even see the pattern anymore. Um, so this will be kind of a around the house keep my feet warm kind of sock. And of course it's like, well today I'm in Texas so we've this is the time of the year where we go hot cold hot cold so like I woke up this morning and it was in the 60s and it got up to like 72 and it was really humid but then the cold front moved in and we got the rain and now it's back down in like the 50s or 40s or something so um so this is the time of year where you might take you might put these on but then you might also be taking these off or not wearing them every day so and then I think I mentioned last time um I don't have any of the balls. So this calls for, except for the largest sock, calls for two balls of the Patton's Croy sock yarn. For the largest sock, it calls for three. And the color, the dye lot that I had of the Slate Jacquard, I only had two and I'd had it for so long that what was on the shelf now did not match. So I bought this gray um gentry gray to do heels toes and cuffs and it and it looks great you like you can't even tell that it didn't go come like this so um so yeah so i'm i don't know two-thirds of the way down the leg and then i'll have the heel and then the foot to do and any and i will only need the one ball of the gentry gray for heels toes and cuffs um i certainly did not use it all um, and I didn't really think to weigh it to see, but, but there's plenty left. So I'm going to have plenty and it is a, um, it is a heel flap and gusset. I know it's kind of hard to see cause it's such a dark, um, yarn, but it is a heel flap and gusset, um, which I like. I didn't, this was actually one of the, not the last, but one of the later heels that I learned how to do because on a lot of socks, I didn't like that the way that looked but in hearing other people talk about them and the more or now that I've done two or three like this I realize they're that the other folks are right that these actually fit and wear really well 
Um, and it's, and it's the heel of a sock. Like once you put it on your foot, you can't even, it's the heel of a sock. So, um, yeah, I just had to get over my mental funk that I had about just the look of them. But yeah, it's totally great. Totally awesome. So I'm thrilled and it's, and they're moving super quick. And I think this is a, um, pattern that I'm going to attempt with other yarns and other, um, try other things with because it's definitely one of those that um, is a very simple, easy, memorizable um, pattern. And it's not, it doesn't take um, forever. I mean, it's, it's very repetitive. You can sit in front of the TV and, and knit it and it's, it's very easy to do. So, so that's my, my only work in progress. But with knitting, I'm typically a little more... Um, monogamous like I only want to kind of work on one thing at a time I will admit I kind of jump back and forth between um the second of my maroon blur flurry hat and these socks just because um once I got the first one done and I realized I wanted to try something a little bit different I kind of put the socks down and worked on that hat because it was super quick I mean like literally like the smaller one I did like in a day I mean it went just just within a few hours I was done with it so and then I went back to my socks so um, so yeah, that's everything that I've knitted on. So I'll show you a couple of things that I've received since the last, um, knitting episode I did. Um, one of the things I'll start with is a, um, set that I got from, uh, Lady Dye Yarns. Um, they are the ones that did or had the, the Schitt's Creek, um, kits they did the Schitt's Creek cowl and then they had the stitch markers um they also have so they do a lot of tv related stuff but they do a lot of book related stuff and they're doing like a black history month related thing right now which is totally amazing um so they do a lot of great things so I'll put their information down you really should go check them out but they also do um the office kit so this says, memo from the desk of Lady Dye Yarns, read The Office Club. Dear Crafter, it has come to management's attention that you have purchased a Lady Dye Yarns Club. We hope that when said club reaches its intended destination, you will enjoy all of the contents and will cast on immediately upon receipt. Sincerely, Team Lady Dye Yarns. And of course, it's on Dunder Mifflin letterhead so I'm gonna open this up really quick sorry guys the main the main package is in this really nice film so that was kind of that didn't require a whole lot of noise but I was saving this till now so just like the other um the Schitt's Creek there's a Dundee <laughs> award so that's much larger. I don't know. Um, I don't know if it says in here. Oh, it's a keychain. Okay, so basically the the deal in that that's like a keychain or something. Maybe like a fob you'd hang on scissors or on a zipper pull or something like that. But then in addition are these adorable office key or uh, stitch markers. So there's. Michael Scott's World Best Boss mug and <laughs> Dwight saying false or actually I don't know if that's Dwight or if that's the intern kid I think that's Dwight and then there's Shroot Farms the Beats and then of course the ever quoted that's what she said so that was in there. Then in addition, we got stickers. <laughs> and then we got some Bean Town Tea, Apricot Green Tea, which I'm pretty sure it's just loose tea. Um, and then we got two skeins of yarn by Lady Dye Yarn. One is called Halpert, as in Jim, which is the blue. 
And then the other one is Beasley, as in Pam, which is the peach, which is absolutely awesome. There is a pattern for a beanie that goes with it that I'm sure, um, or actually I, I know was sent via email. So they sent the Ravelry code. Basically you got, um, you know, a coupon code. So you got the pattern for free. And the pattern is called the Short Stuff Slouchy Beanie by Jimmy Knits. Um, and if I can find, if there's a picture of it, I'll, I'll put a picture up here so you guys can see what that looks like. And then this project bag again, <laughs> another project from the people, persons, paper people. And the project bag was designed by May Sonder. The stickers were designed by Crochet Luna and the keychain stitch markers which also did the same company that did the Schitt's Creek stitch markers is DK Graham um, they also did these as well so super exciting um, I'll have to look at the beanie it may be that um, I want to keep these for something else these are I assume this says too many skeins 200 yards so I'm going to say these are 100 yards each fingering weight of 100% superwash merino so I may actually save these and do some Jim and Pam socks or something <laughs> um, with these and then look and see if I can find something else to do the beanie in these are absolutely adorable colors but um, they are the kind of thing where um, I don't know that I would wear them as a hat I'll have to look at the pattern and see um, because obviously they design these for these colors to go together but Maybe I want to do something different. So I got that. That was super exciting. And then somewhere around Valentine's Day, or a little bit before Valentine's Day, one of my favorite knitwear designers is, and actually I should say, well, I'll say knitwear designer. She may design other things, but the thing that I know her for are these incredible incredible beanies um that she designs one for every national park and i think right now she said she's up to i don't know if it's 36 or 56 yeah i don't know but she's like you know it's amazing so her name is nancy bates um and I stumbled across her patterns a long time ago. So I had bought, um, she occasionally, or maybe it's still like, it's kind of a long-term thing, thing, but she does like a buy two, get one free or buy three, get one free or something like that. So I had bought, um, a while back, several for the parks, either that I had been to or want to go to or just because the patterns were freaking awesome so early early to almost mid-february she sent out that she was selling her kits and up until now i had only bought her patterns not that I didn't want the kits because when you see here in a minute, her patterns are very, very specific to the park. So very, very color specific. But I knew that the colors, for instance, like her Yellowstone one, which I bought, is basically the Prismatic Spring. The big, huge rainbow um, geyser spring that everybody knows. The minute you see it, you know it's Yellowstone. It's the big Prismatic Spring. So it's rainbow. So, um... Not that I wouldn't want the yarn to make that hat, but I know I can do a blue, green, yellow, orange, red, you know, whatever that, that order is. And actually it's probably reversed from that. It's probably red, orange, yellow, green, blue, because the center's the, the real pretty, um, turquoise blue color. But I knew I could do those colors at any time, find those colors at any time. But earlier in February, she put out um, a Instagram, I think, post that if you bought a kit along with what she is now, um, 
including as part of her shop, which are these adorable tags to go on the beanies. So just like my stitchable tag that I did on my beanie, you can now buy a tag for every pattern she's got. So I went through the patterns that I already had and bought those patterns knowing at some point I would stitch those hats, but now I've got the tags to go with them. Well, her Instagram post said that if you bought the kit and the matching tag to go with it, that she would include an extra Valentine's goodie as well. So I bought two. I bought, oops, I bought the Mount Rainier and I bought Grand Teton. And I have been to both of these parks. And they're very similar. I mean, they're not the same, but they're similar. Um, but these actually do. And of course, I haven't taken them out of the package yet. But these actually do have the yarn you need to knit the, the hats. So, the, so with each one of those, I got one of these. <laughs> Which they weren't anything crazy. They were basically box of sweethearts from Nancy to me a package of skittles and then a tree bark pencil which is totally cool um I have to figure out if I have some kind of pencil sharpener sharpen this with otherwise I won't be using it and then these which I absolutely love because I've seen these everywhere and I'm always seeing Facebook and Instagram uh, ads for them, but I had never gotten one until or two until now. But these little field notes, and they're they match the national park. Um, I don't want to open the other one, but you can kind of see in the back they're both different. So, and they're just blank like journals. Um, and. If you do go to national parks, you know that they have the passport stamps in the in the lobby at the visitor center, so you could also get your your uh, passport stamp. But they're just little, just little blank journals, so I couldn't help it. I was like, I knew there were more patterns I wanted to get of hers, and the fact that she's running this deal, this special, and I was like, oh yeah, and it's Valentine's Day, and it'll be a gift to me, and it was just great. So love her designs you should definitely go check them out i would buy them all <laughs> but i'd go broke so i've just kind of i've either purchased ones that like saguaro i okay so saguaro i have not been to but i love that hat so much i had to buy that pattern and crater lake is one that i haven't been to yet but i want to go to and i love that pattern a lot too um so yeah so basically i just kind of told myself you know what go ahead and buy a few of these patterns and at some point you'll you'll knit them um for yourself or for somebody else or knit them before you go visit these places um but then the other two were places i have been so that'll be really exciting um to have those at some point to wear um so okay so then in addition to that um simply serving who a lot of you guys are probably familiar with uh lindsay does the um really cute charm um patterns or charm uh what am i trying to say progress creeper progress keepers stitch markers those kinds of things but they're the like the poly clay and she so there was one that i was kind of um had my eye on that I really wanted to get so she had had a shop update so I wanted to make sure I got my hands on it and it's the little mandrake from Harry Potter but like a kawaii themed uh, one but then in addition she was running a special or a sale on all of her holiday um, ones like basically it was a blind purchase 
Um, you basically just told her if you wanted the ring, the stitch marker, or the clasp, the pro progress keeper. And she was just running a um, $5, I think, for just leftover holiday ones, you know, that she was clearing out of her shop um, just to get rid of them. So, I didn't know what I was getting. It was a mystery, you know, mystery purchase. But I got one of her snowflakes, which is really, really cute. And I got... A little star little angel star and I got a little angel sugar cookie and I got a little Christmas tree with like little earmuffs and a purple earmuffs and a scarf really really cute and I never had any of hers before either so that was kind of exciting just to have now I can say I've got simply serving um, stitch markers as well so I got those and then Bertie Parker who is another um, stitch marker designer, but she does a lot of knitting notions and, and knitwear and uh, uh, knitting designs and stuff like that. Um, did her little stitch markers um, and she collaborated with one of my favorite people in the whole world. Okay, so Gigi made it, Gay Glaspie. And if you know, her favorite color is orange. So Bertie Parker did Gigi made it stitch marker. So this is her famous stand in the gap. Um, I've got the shirt and I've got um, a pin, I think, for stand in the gap. This is uh, Gigi's little logo of the, the knitting lady. Um, and then of course, um, Gigi, her favorite color is orange so there's a orange yarn ball and then um, this one says hashtag on purpose and then a couple of little orange hearts um, but absolutely absolutely cute and I love Gigi so much and she doesn't she's very active on Instagram Gigi is and um, and I get her newsletter which she really only puts out once a week on Mondays and it's just more of a motivational um, inspirational kind of her thoughts for the week just to kind of get you going and I absolutely love it every time I see it um, she did do uh, vlogmas over over Christmas last year um, and I watched all of those but she's she's very um, her her social media presence is there kind of it's almost like she's there when you need her to be there but she's not there all the time but she's really really big on instagram so you should give her a follow i'll put her uh instagram information down below um she's she's just a great human being and every time i see her face i just light up because i know she's going to have something motivational and powerful and inspirational to say um so yeah anytime i can support her um, and any other small, um, company, I'm, I'm happy to do it. So then the last thing I think I'm going to talk about, um, let me check my list here. I don't think there's anything else. I think that's everything other than this. So this last purchase is sort of yarn related, but more just craft related in general. And I want to make sure I get this company information right. Um, because she is somebody that I followed, she and another um, knit person, knitting person, um, did always did a YouTube uh, podcast together, and the the her partner, um, her life got kind of busy, so um, now uh, this lady's kind of on her own, not on her own, but she's but she's continuing to do podcast on her own but she started a company called the fiber tree and the way she explained it just so I convey it correctly this is the fiber tree it's basically it's an amalgamation of the word fiber with the word poetry so again the fiber tree but she does or she started um, a Um, what's the word I'm trying to think of a stationary shop a little small small very small stationary shop online but 
she does stickers and she does um, a lot of stuff like if you have journal a journal or a planner or something um, that's kind of what what she sells um, and some of her stuff's very spiritual or um, you know related to um, healthcare, health care uh, wellness kind of stuff too but I just like the crafting stuff so she had these cute little stickers absolutely cute she had these stickers absolutely adorable and then I want to take these out because this is actually a set of stickers um, and these are all designed herself so I assume what she does is she designs them somewhere and then um, has them sent to her but these are oh, they smell really good I mean they smell like paper but they smell like fresh clean clean paper but this is um she has several different colors of these but these are like knitwear so there's like a scarf and a sweater and a hat and then the matching gray um like frame stickers or tags you know if you wanted to put something and her idea was like if you kept a knitter's journal you know you might use these and then just some smaller little gray dots to go with them too but she had other colors I think one of the colors she, or one of the I say other colors but she had other sets with different colors um, I think one of the sets was more of like pastels like peaches and soft pinks and purples and then another one may have been more, not bright, but, but more, um, you know, vivid, more vivid colors. But I like, I just like the gray because they're a little more muted and a little more simple, but I couldn't help it. It's absolutely adorable. And then she had these journaling cards, which, so it also came with, I want to be able to get this out of the package if I can. It also came with a really, really nice um, paper clip, just really fancy paper clip. But these little journaling cards, so like, um, like you might either use double-sided tape or something, um, but put these in your journal. just as messages as reminders you know not all the time but occasionally you need motivation and I just thought they're absolutely amazing oh, do what sets your soul on fire but you know occasionally we need these and I even thought you know these would be nice like um you know, you send somebody a card in the mail or send somebody, you know, a uh, oh, photograph. <laughs> um, and you might, you know, just kind of clip this to it. So, yeah, so these were really, really exciting. So, again, the name of the company is called The Fiber Tree. And I will put her uh, website down below as well. Um, and yeah, go check her out because she's, she's amazing. She's very creative. And as a matter of fact, the last video I saw of her on YouTube, she did a tutorial of, she was making a, so we all kind of keep our journals, but sometimes our journals get really big. Like mine's really thick and it's got all kinds of books and stuff in it. She was making a smaller one. It's more like a planner or a, a reminder book that she wanted to keep in her purse for her wellness so every time she went to the doctor she had all of her you know what she was taking you know the days she was taking and what she was taking and then maybe even you know the reminders of the days that she forgot to take what she was supposed to take um you know notes to herself about if she had some kind of um 
physical issue that she wanted to make sure and address with the doctor. If um, she noticed she was having any kind of, you know, ups and downs days that she wanted to discuss with her doctor. But all of those things kept in just a little planner that she could keep in her purse. So when she did go to the doctor, it reminded her of all the things she wanted to discuss. Because we all know as we get older, we forget <laughs> to talk to the doctor about all the things that went wrong since the last time you saw them. Because we don't see them every day or talk to them every day. So we don't get to tell them all the things that happen all the time. But her little YouTube tutorial was using her stickers and her um, planner, her stationary stuff to show you kind of how she built her little uh, wellness uh, planner for her purse. So that was really exciting too. And if I can find that tutorial, I'll put that down there too. So that way you can find her YouTube channel and check her out if you want. So, all right, that is everything for this, this episode. I hope you guys um, enjoyed it. Um, as always, if there's anything that I discussed not very well, or I forgot to discuss, or I forgot to mention, or, um, something you saw that I kind of just glossed over because, you know, I wasn't thinking about it at the time that I showed it to you, feel free to ask me below and I will be happy to answer any questions you've got. Um, I thank you guys for watching. Um, again, I hope your March is uh, a good one and we'll probably see you here in the next week or two um, if not with a couple of unboxing or tutorial videos then um, my next one will be cross stitch so until then you guys take care uh, be kind to one another and we'll see you again soon